So we got to find critical numbers. So we need to find where the first derivative is zero and where the first derivative is undefined. So we're going to come over here and do this problem. And I got to look on the paper so I can see. I cannot see that. I'll get my glasses on so I can see what that exponent says. So we got x to the one fifth power. X to the one fifth power times the quantity x plus one. Now, uh, you know, I think I'm going to distribute this x to make my derivative easier. I could do product rule, but if I distribute the x, I think it'll be easier. We need to know this is five fifths. So when you multiply like bases, you add exponents. So this would be x to the six fifths times x or plus x to the one fifth. And now the derivative will be much faster. So I do the derivative of this first one, so that's going to be six fifths x to the and subtract five fifths from six fifths gives you one fifth and plus one fifth x to the negative four fifths. So this is going to be six x to the one fifth over five plus one over five x to the four fifths. So what I would do is get a common denominator. So I need to multiply to get a common denominator. It's going to be this five x to the four fifths. I'm going to multiply this by x to the four fifths over x to the four fifths. So when I do that on the top, I'm going to get x six x because one fifth and four fifths is five fifths plus one all over 5x to the 4 fifths power. So there's my derivative. Now, uh, I'm going to now take this and find where f prime equals zero. So I've told you this in many videos. All you need to do is take the numerator equal to zero because the first thing you do with this is multiply it over times zero. So there is one value at negative 1 sixth. There's one critical number. And then where f double prime is undefined is where the denominator equals zero. So you divide by five and then take to the five fourths power, you get zero. So those are my two critical numbers right there. So now I'm supposed to find the second derivative. So I'm going to do the second derivative. Now, uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do to get the second derivative is I'm going to come up here and do it with this with this thing right here because I think it'll be faster. You could do quotient rule with, uh, with what we got right here and it'd be fine, it'd be the same thing, but I'm gonna use this thing up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 1 fifth times 6 fifths, which would be 6 20 fifths, and reduce that power by 1. And then I'm gonna take negative 4 fifths times 1 fifth, which would be negative 4 20 fifths, and subtract uh, 5 fifths from 4 fifths, I think that's negative 9 fifths. So there's my derivative right there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those in the denominator. So I got, and if you guys catch me making a mistake, please unmute yourself and yell at me. So I got 6 over 25 x to the 4 fifths minus 4 over 25 to the 9 fifths. Oops, I left the X off. So now I want to get concavity at these two places. Well, I hope we can see that if I stick zero in there, if I do F double prime of zero, that gives me zeros in the denominator. This is undefined, so I get nothing for this. There is no concavity at zero. Okay, so this is not a max or a min at zero. So then I've got to do f double prime of negative one sixth. Okay, so well, this is going to be a nice one. So I'm going to get six over twenty five to the negative one sixth to the four fifths power uh, minus four over twenty five to the negative one sixth to the nine fifths power. Okay, so anyway, when I do this problem, if I do the fifth root of a negative, I get a negative. But I'm gonna take that to a fourth power, which is gonna give me a positive. So I know this is positive right here, okay? Then when I come over here to this part, when I do a negative to a fifth root, it's gonna be a negative. 
And when I take a negative to a net an odd power, it's still a negative. So this whole bottom part is going to be a negative number. So it's minus a negative, which gives me plus a positive. So what that tells me is that this value right here is a positive value which what that tells me is this graph is concave up at x equals negative one-sixth. And we know that negative one-sixth is a critical number. So what that means on the graph is, if, I'm at, if this is negative one and I got negative one-sixth somewhere on the graph and the graph is concave up because this is a positive value, that means it's doing this. It's doing this, which means this is a minimum value, okay? So what this means is F has a minimum, and I could put equals and put that at X equals negative one-sixth. Now, if I wanna actually find this value, which you would probably have to do on the AP test is, I'm supposed to come up here and plug negative one-sixth into both of these. Okay, so I'm supposed to plug negative one-sixth into both of these, um, which is going to be a crazy number. So I'm really not going to do it because I think all it asked me to do is want to know where the relative min was. Yes. Yeah, so if I was if I was going to tell you where it was, I would say I would put in here and I'd put negative one six to the six fifths power. What was the rest of that up there? Uh, plus negative one six to the I think it was one fifth. Yes, one fifth power. So I could have put this part right here in there and you don't have to simplify in this class no you have to solve for the undefined because that is another possible point uh, critical numbers occur not only where the first derivative equals zero but also where the first derivative is undefined Anybody else have any questions? Could we do three? I've done three. I will show you where it is. I did three last week. So let me show you where that thing is. It would really save us time if you guys would uh, look for stuff and find stuff or try to find stuff. I'm pretty sure I did it. I'm going to look. If I didn't do it, we'll do it again. I think I did it last week, if I remember right. Maybe I didn't do it. Oh, that's a different number three. All right, I think I might have done it, but I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to take a picture of number three, and then I'll put it on this on the video. Oops, on the video as well. Let me find it. Oh, 13. Okay, I'll do 13 instead. Let me find 13. If I were you guys, I would, uh, when it asked me to find a minimum or a maximum, I would always use the first derivative test unless there was no other choice. Because a lot of people get confused by this second derivative problem. So unless there is a problem that is specifically asking you to use the second derivative test, I would not use it. I would use the first derivative. Again, the reason I'm saying that is more kids make mistakes trying to use the second derivative test than the first. 
Yeah, so I think this is the same direction, right? Yes. So I've got to get the first derivative again because I've got to find critical numbers. So this is product rule. So product rule says take the first term times the derivative of the second term, which is the exact same thing when you have e times the derivative of the exponent, which is negative one, and then plus the second term times the derivative of the first term. Okay? So then what I would do is uh, I would factor out, well, yeah, I'm going to factor out a GCF. So there's an X in both of these, X in both of those, and an E to the negative X in both those. So I'm going to take out an X and an E to the negative X out of both those. And that's going to leave me with a negative X here because of that negative sign and that X squared, there's one left. And then over here, it's going to leave me a two. So now there's my f prime. So my critical numbers occur where every factor is zero. So where x equals zero, where e to the negative x equals zero, and where negative x plus two equals zero. So I'm gonna add x over. So there's this critical number and there's a critical number. Now something you're supposed to know about exponential functions. Exponential functions go through zero, one, and they x-axis is a horizontal asymptote, so they kind of go like this. So if I put a negative in front, that flips it over the y-axis, so this graph actually goes like this. This graph right here goes like this, but it never touches the x-axis, so I get no critical numbers from that. This number is always greater than zero, and that's something you must know. So I have two critical numbers. So I'm gonna put a zero here. Oops, I don't need that because I'm doing the second derivative test. Okay, so let's see, what's gonna be the easiest way to do this one? I think it's probably gonna be easier to take this one and do product rule twice instead of doing product rule three times. So let me, uh, let me uh, simplify this thing and I'll do the derivative of the simplified of that. I mean, I could do product rule three times because there's three different things here. You could do it three times, but that's harder. So let's see, this is gonna be negative x squared e to the negative x. And then this is plus two x e to the negative x. Okay, so I'm gonna do the derivative of this thing. So I gotta do product rule here and product rule again. So f double prime of x. It's going to be first term, derivative of the second term, plus the second term, times derivative of the first term. So it's going to end up being a minus two here in front. And then plus, then I got to do product rule over here. So first term, derivative of the second term, plus the second term, Derivative of the first term. Let's see. I want to make sure I did this right. Let's see. Let's see. I did first term, derivative of the second, plus second, derivative of the... Oh, I left the X off right here. This is wrong. So when I did the derivative of this first term, it should have been negative 2X. Okay? Okay. All right, let's go ahead and try to simplify this mess a little bit. So a negative times a negative is a positive. And let's see over here. This is negative. Oh, look at this. Negative 2x e to the negative x. And oh, that's another negative 2x e to the negative x. That's negative 4x e to the negative x. And then plus 2 e to the negative x. So this is kind of an ugly one. So we're gonna do f double prime of zero. Let's see what we get, because we're gonna use that critical number. So I get zero times anything is zero. Zero times anything is zero. So here I got two e to the zero power. e to the zero is one, so two times one gives me two. So this is a positive value for that right there, which means concave up. And then I'm gonna do f double prime of two, which is going to be negative two squared, oops, sorry, positive two squared. Let's go ahead and put four in there. So this 
This is 4e to the negative 2 power minus 4 times 2, that's going to be 8. That's 8e to the negative 2 power and plus 2e to the negative 2 power. So these are all like terms. So 4 and 2 is 6. 6 minus 8 is negative 2 over e squared. So this is a negative number. So this is concave down. All right, so we would say F has a min. And again, now we could, we could take this zero and plug in here, which would give us zero, has a min equal to zero at X equals zero. And F has a max equal to, and plug two in up here, so that's four E to the negative two. So you can either write 4e to the negative 2 or 4 over e squared, either one's okay, at x equals 2 by second derivative test. Okay, so that's that problem. Oh, I hit the wrong button. My bad. Just a second. 